Stocks shaking off that dour jobless claims data, sending the S&P 500 up 1.5% as of Thursday afternoon. Well, our next guest is optimistic about the prospects for the markets. Let's talk to Courtney Dominguez as she joins us from her home in uh, Brooklyn, New York. She's a senior wealth advisor at Payne Capital Management. Welcome, Courtney. Thank you for um, having me. Well, investors sort of shrugged off today's jobless claims data. Um, and perhaps took comfort in China as the rise in Chinese exports. Um, what did you make of that, uh, the move in the markets? We've been getting a lot of dour economic data lately. Yeah, I think what's really been interesting to see is the markets have been doing really well in the face of all the bad data that keeps coming out. And whether that's unemployment claims or earnings reports, realistically, a lot of this has already been priced in. I mean, I think it's kind of old news at this point. We know that the economy is going to get hit. And that's why the markets went down over the last six weeks. But now seeing that actually come to fruition and seeing the markets not react to that means they've already priced it in. It's any future uncertainty that I think could spook the markets, but not the actual data we're seeing. And I actually see that as a pretty optimistic sign. Now, you've been bullish about the markets. Why so? Pessimism indexes keep going up. Which actually I think is a good thing. And I, I think you want to see when people are the most pessimistic actually tends to mean that we've probably seen the worst of the market downturn so far. And we have seen a poll of investors. There's over 46% of investors have been bearish over the last 10 weeks, which is one of the longest periods we've seen that. And seeing really an extreme pessimism and a lot of liquidity and cash on the sidelines right now, where people are willing to buy back in and just kind of waiting for that next dip, means that future dip can actually be a lot less severe. And I think those things together actually do tend to mean we could have seen the worst of this. So as a kind of contrarian sign, that's actually a good thing. All right, you mentioned uh, cash on the sidelines, Courtney. Personal savings rates, I've read, really uh, jumped higher. So are you anticipating that that's going to be the cash on the sidelines or are people going to be stuffing that under their mattresses? Well, we've had two things happen, right? So we had last month, a lot of people just ran for the sidelines. And so they sold out of the markets and now they're sitting in cash. And then what happened is we had the markets bounce about 20%. And a lot of people feared, oh, wait, maybe I missed out on the dip or the buying opportunity. And they're waiting for the next one. They're not just saying, oh, okay, I'm ready to put my money to work. They're waiting for that dip before they do it. And so that can actually lead to a lot more money going into the stock markets. But on top of that, we have savings rates are higher because essentially we have no, nowhere we can spend our money right now. We can't go out. We can't go to restaurants. We can't do all these things we normally would. So on top of that, we just have extra money. And a lot of times that does end up making its way back into the stock markets over time as things hopefully do start to open up here. The question is when that'll happen, but hopefully sooner rather than later. And, and where do you suggest they put that uh, money that's sitting on the cash lines when they're ready to redeploy it? Yeah, and I think really sticking to the same discipline that you have, the same strategy is going to be really important. But looking at probably your hardest hit sectors are going to be um, usually have the biggest bounce back opportunity. So I've been looking at things like your small companies, things like your value companies, things like energy have definitely been hit the hardest. So I think there's definitely some buying opportunities there. 